let's take a look at this model XY PWM1, which is a frequency generator with PWM control. This was sent to me at no cost by IC Station to check out. The unit has a rotary encoder for changing the frequency or duty cycle and a push button to change modes. It's a panel mount design, so you can pop this into a panel if you want to make a certain little test unit. It has screw terminals for voltage plus and minus, and then a PWM and ground out. $4.43, one channel signal generator, one hertz to 150 kilohertz. Let's glance at some of the specifications. It says you can give it 3.3 to 30 volts. There's a normal mode with one hertz to 150 kilohertz, and a precise mode with one hertz to 15 kilohertz, where you get more control over the duty cycle. Here's all the accuracies of the ranges. Output current, it can drive 5 to 30 milliamps. And the output amplitude is generally close to whatever input voltage you're supplying this with. And the back panel comes off very easily. So inside you have a couple of ICs. And here's an interesting feature. Ground, transmit, and receive. We have a UART here for optional control of this unit. And if you hook up to the UART, Here's the specs on communicating with it and the commands that you can issue. So you can turn the PWM output on and off, change the mode from normal to precision, set the frequency and duty cycle. And so you could generate a test bench out of this, have some external thing with software to turn on and off the unit, changing its parameters, run a test. And that opens up a whole new world of possibilities. Inside there's basically two ICs and some other miscellaneous parts. HT1621 whole tech is an LCD controller. So this will interface with that other chip and control the display. The other chip is a Nuvoton N76E003, 8051 based microcontroller. Lots of information here, but I guess the PWM is the feature that we're mostly using on here. I traced out where the PWM output is coming from, and there's this big power resistor, 1K, pulling up the PWM output to the V plus input supply, and connected to this PWM output is this Q1 transistor, and that connects to ground, and is driven by this pin here on the end of this micro, which would be PWM3. So when this pin is PWMing this transistor, it's bringing the output to ground or allowing it to pull up to V in. So that's how the PWM output voltage range is supposed to be similar to the input range. I have this hooked up with five volts and ground and there's a signal output wire. The only control on this one is this rotary encoder which we can move to control the frequency or duty and there's a button we can press for some command control. By default, when the unit is sitting idle, when you go to move the rotary encoder, you're changing the duty cycle, and there's a coarse and a fine duty adjust mode. Right now, I'm in the more coarse mode where every movement of the encoder changes by 1% duty, and in this mode, the frequency can go from zero all the way up to 150 kilohertz. So to change the frequency, you just momentarily push the rotary encoder and the indicator shows you're adjusting frequency. If you take too long it'll go back to default duty. So you have to be fast. So I'm already at 150 kilohertz and the higher the frequency is the more coarse the adjustment is. Right now I can only adjust it by 1 kilohertz intervals because it's so high and when I get below 100 kilohertz I can adjust it in 0.1 kilohertz intervals. The faster I move the encoder, the quicker it will skip downward, so I don't have to sit there all day. When I get below 10 kilohertz, I'm adjusting it by 10 hertz at a time. And when I'm below 1 kilohertz, now I can adjust it by 1 hertz increments. To get into other modes, we just hold down the push button on the encoder, and it will cycle through different modes. So I'm holding it down, and I get to this mode, and there's a down and an up. I can toggle between down and up while I'm in this mode. What this does, if I didn't want to be able to fully adjust duty cycle with the encoder, let's say I just wanted to go between max of 80% duty 
and I only want it to go as low as 10% duty because I'm doing some sort of a test and I don't want to accidentally go there, I can set the limits here, but let's keep it at full range 0 and 100. So now I hold down the button again and switch modes. The next mode, it's locked. So that's what these two indicators mean beside the frequency and the duty. So I've already set it up the way I want and now I can't accidentally come and change anything. The only way to reactivate is to again hold down the button and wait for it to cycle out of that mode. If we keep holding it past that, now we're into the more precise duty cycle adjust mode. So the frequency adjust is the same as it was before, but now the duty we can adjust by 0.1% if we want a really fine increment control on that. So this really is a duty cycle generator device with a pretty good frequency range as well. Let's take a look at the output on a scope. The display looks kind of washed out on camera, but if I adjust the settings so it's basically nighttime, right now it's set for 0 hertz and 50% duty. So if I put it to the minimum 1 hertz, the scope readout is showing 50% duty and 1.0 hertz. And with 5 volts powering this unit, we have 4.78 volts as our top right now. And that may vary as we connect this up driving different things and it might load down a bit. Right now this is just a scope probe on the output only. If we zoom in a bit on the rising edge we have 60 to 70 something nanoseconds there. And the more we zoom in we can see it's a lot of little ripples even on the rising edge as well as the bottom and the top of the waveform. But when we zoom out to a normal scale it just looks like a normal sharp clean waveform. Let's go to 100 hertz and again 50% duty 100 hertz pretty much dead on. And if I keep going and I get to 1 kilohertz, dead on 1 kilohertz, 50% duty. And we may be starting to see a little bit of these overshoot, undershoot spikes on the edges. Let's adjust the duty now and see what happens. I'm going to adjust the duty down. Let's go 25% and it looks pretty bang on. Let's go all the way down. I set it for 3% and we have 3% showing and there's not much on here to measure a frequency but it's trying to get to 1 kilohertz. 1% and if I go to 0% I get 0% out. And that's a nice feature because when we do things like try to use a 555 and we're trying to get perfectly 0 and perfectly 100% duty and close to those it gets a little bit tricky. So here's 75% duty and we got 75% or so measured. 99% duty. And if we go to 100% duty, we get a constant high out. So that's a feature I really like. We seem to have very good control over the duty cycle. Now I put it in the more precise mode where I can go by 0.1% duty increments instead of just 1% at a time. So I'm at 1 kilohertz and I set it for 9.0% and we're pretty much measuring that. And the scope is going to fluctuate around anyway. If we go to 9.6, the scope is showing 9.6. So I'll go back to 50% and go through the frequency and we have a nice looking 10 kilohertz 50% duty. Now the waveform may be getting a little bit out of square, but it's still a respectable waveform. We should be able to get up to 150 kilohertz in this mode. So let's go for it. Well, we have pretty close to 150 kilohertz, 150.6 measured. Now the 50% duty we are trying to achieve is measuring here at 47%. I'm trying to get 8% and I have 5% and then the signal starts dropping away. When I'm aiming for 97% duty, I'm measuring 94. When I try to get 99% I get 97 and then I go to 100 and I do get 100. So at 100 kilohertz targeting 50% duty we get 47.5 to 48. So really when we start getting past 50 kilohertz that's when we start getting more than 1% away from our target 50% duty. But overall for the price this looks like a very good little accessory to have around. I'm using one of these L9110 motor driver boards to drive this little DC motor that I have clamped on this stand. 
I have a 5 volt power supply coming to the breadboard, powering the PWM unit and the motor driver and the motor. There's two logic control inputs, so I've got one pin grounded and the other I'm giving a PWM signal and I can control the speed in one direction like this. It's currently at 100 Hz, 20% duty PWM, so if I increase the duty, the speed will increase. all the way to 100% full-on motor. And I can slow it down. With a 50 Hz output, giving me a 20 millisecond wide pulse, and my duty cycle adjusted now for one extreme range of motion on the servo, I put the unit in precise duty cycle control mode so I can go by 0.1% increments. So if I turn down the duty cycle and reduce the pulse width, I can test this servo out quickly without having to set up an Arduino or something. So as I turn it down, it's going to rotate clockwise. And I don't want to go too far because it might get stuck. Don't ask me how I know. If we just want to quickly test out LED PWM dimming, maybe we want to see if there's visible flicker at certain frequencies. So we can just pull out this device, generate some PWM signals, and control the LED. So I have 1 kilohertz, and right now it's at 0% duty. I'm at 5 volts, and I have a 1K current limit resistor just so I don't break anything as I increase the duty. So as I start increasing the duty cycle, the LED is going to get brighter. And I can decide if it looks okay, or if I might need to change the frequency. In this case, when I get around 50% duty, the LED doesn't seem to get any brighter, because I am limiting the current anyway. And I can just evaluate my potential circuit design without having to do all kinds of software testing. If we have a little digital logic circuit like this light chaser, and we don't already have a clock or oscillator built, and we don't want to fumble around for parts, we can just pick up this little PWM generator. Right now I just set it at 50% duty. It probably doesn't matter too much. We just need a rising edge. And right now it's at 1 hertz, and instantly I can clock this circuit and test it out without having to go find resistors and capacitors and a bunch of wires. So then, of course, I can change the frequency. 5 hertz, 10 hertz, 20 hertz. Or, too fast to really distinguish on a light chaser. As simple as it may be to go and build a 555 circuit, this may be simpler. Well, I'm pretty impressed by this unit so far. I like the form factor with the snap-in panel mount design the option to get in there and try out a UART to control it if I want to automate something someday. It looks like it has a lot of potential. Thanks for stopping by and checking out this little PWM generator with me. Thanks to IC Station for sending it out. See you on the next video.